There's been a lot going on in the community over the past couple of days with the release of Expedition, and today I want to talk about my thoughts on this league. The good, the not so good, and the pretty terrible. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I'm back to talk about Expedition. Now, a lot of you have many, many thoughts about Expedition. Some of you are really disappointed in Expedition, some of you are really liking Expedition, and it's for lots of different reasons. So today I'm gonna give my honest opinions uh, about the Expedition League, what I think is really great, what I think is not so great. Uh, I'm not really gonna be talking about what I think can be improved, because, you know, I'm not a game developer, I'm just gonna really give my honest opinions here. Now, right before we do start, um, you can see right here, this does not look like a Blade Track character. I'm not sure if any of you have been following along. Uh, I've moved on from my Blade Track character for the moment because the clear was really terrible on the Blade Trap. Thought I'd start a Rage Vortex character. Now, I'm not going to talk about that anymore here. I'll do another video with a Day 2 update in a few hours or so after I get some sleep. Uh, but I, I just thought I would let you guys know right there about that one. Um, now, the League itself. Expedition. First of all, we're going to talk about the League Mechanic. Now, I really enjoy the League Mechanic. Uh, the League Mechanic, to me, feels really rewarding, uh, and it feels like there's a lot of kind of player uh, options in how you set out your League Mechanic, how you place down all of your explosions, what you're exploding, uh, and the rewards that you do get out of it. Um, uh, I've done a couple of the League Mechanic, the Expedition logbooks that you take to your good old friend, uh, Danig hey. over here. Now I don't have any here, but you take him, take one here, place it in here, uh, and then Danig will uh, allow you to open an expedition logbook to be able to go and explode a bunch more things. Those are super rewarding and very fun. I kind of want to buy a bunch more of them and play around with them once I gain a bit more currency. Now the things that are feeling a little bit iffy about the league are the uh, a couple of the choices. Say for example, the immunity choices in the league mechanic. Uh, I get what GGG were trying to do in, you know, making us be a little bit more um, specific with where we do place all of our explosives. And if, you know, say for example, in this character, I'm full fire conversion right now. Uh, if I go immune to fire damage, which has happened, then I won't be able to complete it. So I have to try and, you know, avoid it, go around it, which, you know, could seem like that's, you know, strategy there. But in actual play, it just feels a little bit clunky just having to completely move around something. You know, if you've got a really nice reward in that area, um, but you don't want to explode it because, you know, your build is just going to be absolutely terrible, um, then you kind of just move around and it's a bit of a feels bad moment. You see something really cool. Oh yeah, 50% chance to gain more uh, expedition logbooks from runic monsters. Great. Oh, immune to fire. You know, not so great. So there's a couple of fallbacks right there. The other thing, obviously, is all of the um, all of the fragments that you're going to be picking up, the artifacts, right? They just take up inventory space, number one. And number two, there's a lot of them for you to be clicking on. Now, for me, I don't ever have hand pains or anything like that, so it's not as much of a problem. Uh, and I don't think it's as much of a problem as Metamorph, as people might be comparing it to. You know, the big Metamorph kerfuffle of having to pick up all of those fragments or whatever they were. It's not as big a deal as that, I think, but I still think... Probably more thought should have been put into maybe siphoning all of these together or something like that. Um, or, you know, them going straight into your, your locker at the end or anything like that, your expedition locker, that could be pretty good. Um, the, the bad about the League Mechanic, there's not anything super, super bad about the League Mechanic in my opinion, apart from not really dropping many uh, of the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, scrap medals. I'm not really dropping any scrap medals. I'm not really dropping any of the, the Tugan ones as well, or uh, whatever, Tugan, the exotic coinage. They're really, really difficult to drop. I think I've dropped three in total of the exotic coinage, and maybe five in total of the scrap metal. Gwenon, on the other hand, the gambler, I've dropped uh, way too many of these gambles right here. I've been using them a lot, so I only have one right here, but I've dropped a lot of them. So it feels really unbalanced in, in that regard. I'm not sure if it's meant to be. It probably is meant to be, but honestly, they, they should be balanced, and you should be dropping the same amount. Um, Rog himself, uh, sometimes you can create some really, really good items, which is great. Most of the time I've used him, he's created really terrible items. I've taken an item that's got like three res and some life on it. Uh, uh, I actually just did some boots. They had some three res and life. 
I took them, tried to, you know, maybe upgrade the life, reroll prefixes. Uh, a couple of clicks later, the boots were uh, trashed here, <laughs> so I put them in the bin. Um, but I think it's kind of indicative of how GGG kind of wants crafting to be in Bath of Exile, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. Rog is the epitome of um, close your eye, eyes, slam, and uh, hope for the best. So, yeah, there's 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 a little bit to go there. Um, I think Gwenon's fine. She's just a gamble. I think Tujin is fine as well. I think Rog... Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if he needs anything improving, but, like, it's just a little bit of an anecdote to, you know, how crafting is or how crafting might be in the future in in path of exile so that's the league mechanic itself right yeah not too not too bad now every other change that has happened now right now on this character i'm yeah tier five tier six maps at the moment uh grinded up really quickly into these and it felt okay now the reason it felt okay on this character is because i'm basically bypassing mana issues because i'm using rage vortex now rage vortex actually uh, sacrifices uh, it actually uses life it costs life uh, and I'm also using my movement, uh, wherever it is, my Leap Slam with uh, Life Tap, so I don't have to worry there. The only thing that are costing mana at the moment are my War Cries. And they're not really taking much because they're not linked to anything. So it's totally fine. Now on my previous character, mana was really, really bad. The charges that I was gaining for my Mana Flask felt really bad. If I was on a boss and I uh, ran out of Flask charges, I couldn't even kill the, you know, the adds of the boss to gain enough flash charges back to get my mana to keep, you know, grinding or anything like that, keep fighting the boss. Um, so that was that was a little bit rough right there. Sorry, uh, I just went and ate some food because food was ready, um, but I'm back. <laughs> what was I talking about? Mana, right? Yeah, I was talking about mana flasks. So yeah, killing monsters, mana, uh, feels really bad if you do run out of that mana and then you can't get those flask charges back. Um, now I've noticed a couple of times some really sneaky modifiers in Expedition itself. You, you, you know, monsters cannot uh, generate flask charges and it's, you know, in small text. So obviously read your Expedition text as well. Now the rest of the flask changes as well to the rest of utility flasks and everything like that. Um, uh, I'll kind of lump this in with the ailments uh, kind of argument as well and everything like that and, and the changes to how ailments work. So for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to quickly go over flasks pretty much now. I wonder if I've got anything right here. Yeah, so this uh, this flask right here, this ample quicksilver flask of heat, is granting immunity to chill and freeze for one second if used while chilled or frozen, right? So this does mean that this flask, uh, when I press my quicksilver, I'm not immune to freeze while the Quicksilver is running, unless I press the Quicksilver while I have been frozen, right? Which is uh, quite a big change. This is meaning that it's it's really, really great to have, you know, other sources of element immunity or avoidance on the tree or anything like that. Raider can still grab a bunch. Uh, there's a really, really nice ring over here that gets you about 50%. If you take every single node, dump, 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 uh, what the five nodes there, uh, you do get 50% chance to avoid elements and then Raider can get another 50% so you can still be kind of immune there um, but uh, yeah it's 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 still a bit rough now obviously on this flask right here I could probably roll uh, let's see if I can do it right now because I think I have some instilling orbs I do have eight instilling orbs so instilling orbs can be helpful if I take this flask off right here and I try and roll on here say for example reused at the end of the flask effect not exactly what I want right there I'll roll again used when you become shocked I'm going to leave it there for the moment, but um, say, for example, you can roll used when you become frozen, and then it will unfreeze you and grant you the immunity to freeze for one second right there. Um, I might roll that a little bit later. For example, instilling orbs can really help that. Now, I've been grinding a fair bit. I found, you know, eight instilling orbs, or maybe nine instilling orbs, and one enkindling orb. So the drop rate on these is a little bit of a slap to the face. It's kind of like, you know, we've improved some functionality of flasks if you use the enkindling, uh, enkindling or instilling orbs, but uh, we're going to make them still pretty difficult to drop. Um, now, they said they were kind of on par with things like your glass blowers, baubles, and gem cutters prism. Yeah, they kind of are. They kind of are. Um, and I think they really, really need to be more common. Um, give us the opportunity to play around with this. Um, Otherwise, it's really just going to turn a bunch of people off. And it has already turned a bunch of people off all of these these changes here. 
Uh, now, I think there's also been a little bit of a change to how stun and uh, freeze thresholds actually work on players as well. I'm not sure if it was entirely covered in the patch notes or manifesto. It might have been, but it feels a lot more significant now um, that you're getting more, st you're getting stunned more, and you're getting frozen more. Now, I am going to be taking on this character, and I am war crying a lot. I'm going to be taking Admonisher to remove an element when I war cry, which is going to be really helpful with all this kind of stuff. But I'm still going to try and solve my freeze. Um, Shock and uh, um, shock and Ignite will be pretty fine with Admonisher, but like Freeze and Chill, I'm probably going to want to solve somewhere else. Now, the last thing I will mention is Corrupting Blood and Bleed. Number one, Bleed on damage on players has been increased, so monsters will be bleeding you for more damage. Uh, and Corrupting Blood as well uh, kind of, I think, kind of lumps itself in there, but it might only, the bleed damage might only be in terms of like actual bleeds being applied on you. The big change, however, obviously is uh, a staunching flask. Grants immunity to bleeding for one second when used while bleeding, and removes corrupted blood when used as well. Um, so this obviously is the same change as something like your other ailments. <clears throat> and this does mean that uh, if, you get, uh, if you've got a really fast hitting spell, you hit a corrupted blood uh, monster. Um, uh, sometimes you can just kill yourself from the degen before you even realize uh, that you even need to press your front your flask, uh, which is a very anti-fun mechanic. It is basically necessary on all builds to have immunity to corrupted blood, and if you're a spell build as well, uh, because of all the curse changes, you want to have immunity to being silenced, uh, which is pretty difficult to get really early. Now I probably could, you know, that look obviously one jewel socket here. I could get a jewel. A really shitty corrupted blood jewel probably and socketed in right here that would solve some of those problems right there but those degens are really nasty they're really nasty they do a lot of damage so you can probably tell by now that you know I, I'm not a huge fan of these flask charges changes uh, the flask charge changes and everything like that I think it's probably the worst part of this league I think the damage of monsters is okay I think the life of monsters is okay I think the damage nerfs are okay but with all of this coupled with the changes to how flasks are feeling, um, things just start to feel a bit sluggish. The last thing I haven't talked about is movement. Movement itself in Path of Exile has been uh, nerfed a bit in terms of the top end movement of your flame dash, your dash, your smoke mine, uh, and some kind of adrenaline on your flask as well. Any adrenaline mod is only 6 to 8% I think now instead of 20 to 30% move speed. Now, on this character, I'm really not noticing it at all, because uh, I'm both using a Leap Slam faster attacks, which is pretty darn fine, using that on a Berserker with a bunch of Rage, as well as using Close Combat. <clears throat> so, um, I uh, when, when I hit an enemy, I get Close Combat, which then gives me a bunch more move speed on my Leap Slam. Honestly, I'm Leap Slamming through maps like absolute crazy, and, and, and I can Leap Slam over walls, uh, sorry, like over, over gaps and everything like that. It's totally fine. So... The meta now is kind of uh, attack movement skills. I was using a little bit of Whirling Blades earlier and it felt okay, but Leap Slam, oh, excuse me, Leap Slam is basically the top of, of the move speed meta right now, I would say. Smoke Mine feels pretty shit. Uh, I know, uh, I think Tai Tai has pretty much stopped playing the league because uh, of move speed uh, nerfs and everything like that, which I, I honestly makes sense. Uh, you know, high end races are. are, are starting to realize this league is not for them and, and part of Exile, the direction it's moving, is going to take a little bit of adjusting. Um, so honestly, uh, the league mechanic itself, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, the rest of the changes, I would give them a 4 to 5 out of 10 in terms of, of how it actually feels. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all I'm going to say here. Um, let me know in the comments down below how you are finding the league if you're playing. Or if you've already quit the league, let me know. If you're really enjoying the changes, because there are a bunch of people who are, who are really enjoying the changes. I've had a ton in my uh, chat. It's the type of people that don't often speak up much. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically all I'll say. Let me know in the comments down below how you're finding everything. And come and join us on Twitch as we grind this character. Hopefully into the top end of red maps tomorrow. And then looking at pushing the endgame bosses the day after. So at the end of day four, I'm hoping to have most of the endgame bosses down. So... Uh, let's see with that this character right here. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, Badger is out.